So, but yes, with the slower speeds on surface streets, do do officers now have uh, more potential to use a spike strip, for example? You know, the spike strip is a great tool. The problem with it is you have to set it up ahead of time, and that's usually used when the suspect or suspects has a repeat pattern of driving on the same streets. Um, like right now, I believe he's possibly on Tahunga, mm -hmm. heading yes. back over to Riverside, it looks like. Yeah, he yes, just passed right. Riverside. Now he's, uh, yeah, he's on, I think he's on Riverside now. And uh, this would be uh, the Toluca Lake area and North North Hollywood slash Toluca Lake. And he's, uh, his speeds are picking up as that street is fairly empty. And uh, it's do this does uh, create a real element of danger here, right? Because you could have uh, people crossing the street, cross traffic, uh, people who are completely unaware that this is going on. Uh, one would assume the LAPD would have been notified now that they're in L.A.'s territory. Yes, sir. What the CHP will do is notify the local agency of jurisdiction to say, we are in your area, and uh, you may have LAPD North Hollywood unit paralleling the pursuit or being in the area in case of a pursuit terminus. Wow, he's really picked up speed now on uh, Moore Park heading eastbound, heading toward the Toluca Lake area. And um, do you expect that the officers will continue to stay close on this person, even though he is exhibiting uh, pretty erratic uh, you know, maneuvers there and going at high rates of speed? You know, at this point, yes. He, uh, the suspect is driving radically. Um, to the point where there is an urgency and an urgency, but at this point they're going to stay with it until it becomes dangerous to cancel it and go into the tracking mode with the helicopter. I'm sure the LAPD airship is overhead. Okay, he's on uh, Ensign Street, I believe, and uh, coming off of uh, Moore Park. He's now on Riverside, on heading side westbound there. on Riverside. You saw a near collision yeah. there. Um, and we get the kind of the impression he's kind of circling this area. He it looked like he was going to try to get on the freeway at one point as he was approaching Vineland from Moore Park. There is an on-ramp there, but he, he sort of made a move toward it and then either thought better of it or just couldn't make the, the turn. So now it looks like he is back on Moore Park uh, and looking, I'm wondering if he's just looking for another place to get back on oh, the freeway. on a bike. Jeez. Yeah, this is, uh, this is kind, of, kind of scary. The speeds... Uh, getting up there. I mean, the, the, the typical typical street uh, speed there would be about 35 miles an hour. Uh, he's yeah, now he's passing. probably doing about 55, 60. And mm -hmm. like you said, it looks like he does appear to be looking to get back on the freeway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, he's circling, isn't he? He just made a it, made a big well, circle. He was just on that same street a moment ago. So yeah, now he's going back to where yep. he came from. Yes. Yep. And we see this a lot with pursuits, don't we? It, it, it could be he's finding, trying to find the freeway here, or it could be uh, trying to find a place to foot bail. Yeah, and the other thing about this area, too, is um, there's not a freeway on-ramp that's real accessible on that street. I know that street very well, mm -hmm. and it's kind of confusing. All right, and he's on Moore Park now, and he's heading eastbound. Uh, and uh, this would be uh, either, depending on I, you know what area here, it's North Hollywood or Toluca Lake. I don't know what the cross street is here. He's heading towards Moore. Oh, this is Moore Park. All right. This is Moore Park now that he's on. He's westbound on Moore Park. Again, kind of some of the same territory yep. he has been covering. Uh, there is a freeway off-ramp. There are a few, uh, actually from Riverside more than from Moore Park. And uh, perhaps he is trying to find them, or we don't know whether he might be trying to find familiar territory. This could be where he uh, lives or is uh, familiar with. Um, this pursuit, just to catch you up on what's happening here, began in Chino. The uh, California Highway Patrol uh, has been in pursuit of this individual for quite some time, uh, going all the way from Chino uh, and then ending up on the 134 freeway westbound and then bailing in uh, the North Hollywood area. Uh, on Magnolia off the 170. Now he's basically been kind of circling through this area of Moore Park, Riverside, Magnolia, Tahunga, uh, and uh, trying, it appears, to either get back on the freeway or look for someplace familiar to uh, hang around. But in the meantime, uh, these surface streets, uh, Michelle, mm -hmm. just not the place that you want to see this pursuit happening. No, we, we saw bicyclists that this person passed uh, just a moment ago. We, we've seen pedestrians. Oh. Uh, Studio City area now, we're told, and uh, on Laurel Canyon uh, as this continues now. With CHP yeah, he's gonna have to, I'm sorry, he's going to have to make the right on Laurel Canyon 
heading back to the Ventura Freeway here. He's now northbound on Laurel. And Bruce, even though he's continuing to go to, oh, wrong side boy, of the road, going down the wrong side here of that median, uh, he continues to go down these surface streets. Uh, how long would it take for him to drive around on surface streets before this would be handed yeah. off to LAPD? Now he's getting back on the freeway. Oh, never from mind. You know, that, it's a moot point. He's getting back on the freeway. At this point, um, eastbound, you know, they're uh, going to stay right? with or it westbound until well. it stays on the service streets for a while. There, he's getting back on the freeway now, so CHP is going to re-engage. Mm -hmm. But the Ventura Freeway, as you could tell, uh, westbound is during rush hour, and he's headed toward the San Diego Freeway. Right, and he's going to probably hit some significant traffic as he gets closer to that 405 freeway. Yes, ma'am. It always gets really heavy there. All right, and it looks like he's trying to get off here. This might be Woodman, I'm not sure. It's either uh, Coldwater Canyon, could be Woodman, but you see him. He is trying to get around these the, the, the cars in front of him. Mm -hmm. And uh, is somebody, as when they're involved in a pursuit, are some of the officers, okay, he's at a dead stop right now, and this is where it gets dicey. Uh, is somebody like calling out the different violations that are that are occurring along the way? For example, when he was driving on the wrong side of the road, is some sort of record being kept? I guess for charging later in terms of the things that he is doing as he gets yeah. off the freeway now, going through that gas station parking lot, uh, and now on River. I believe that's Riverside. He's on now again, going back eastbound on Riverside through Studio Thank City. You pulling into uh, he's going to be on Riverside Drive uh, eastbound now at Coldwater. Yeah, you know, to your point, yes, you, the, the lead vehicle is concentrating on following the suspect vehicle. The second or even the third vehicle is what we call calling the pursuit, saying speed, direction, travel. Mm. So, so then the second or the third vehicle is determining what the strategy is? Is that what you're saying? Well, the strategy is, unfortunately, one of it's dictated by the suspect or suspects driving the vehicle. The other thing, too, the watch commander or supervisor in the field is making a judgment call That's on it. a minute-to-minute -minute basis of this pursuit. And they're the ones that determine, okay, you know what, speeds are way too high. I'm going to have my vehicles back off. Or, you know what, we're going to let this pursuit go because the crime involved is so heinous and egregious that we have to catch this suspect. Um, and you just don't know how many people could be inside that vehicle, right? And that, and that must be um, a concern to the officers as well, of course, when, they, when this person eventually does pull over. Uh, they just don't know what, what they have on their hands. Oh, yes, ma'am. And, you know, you always assume there's people in the vehicle until you know otherwise, but you'll see it the, when, the, when the pursuit is terminated, that's why they will clear the vehicle because people can hide. And with the newer SUVs and some of the cars now, they tint the passenger and other windows, even though, you know, you can't really tint the driver window, but people do it. Mm -hmm. So you have to take precautions as an officer. There's no such thing as a routine traffic stop. Right. And as can someone tell me in, in, in our, my ear here, it looks like they're heading uh, westbound. I don't know what street this is. I got lost for a second. What street are we on? Can someone tell me in my ear? You know, it looks like Riverside Drive. Okay. All right. Well, we will uh, we'll continue with that assumption until we know for sure. But westbound on Riverside, we believe. Uh, mm -hmm. And look at how close People he came to that car. Uh, that person pulled over like you're supposed to do, yeah. but the guy nearly hit him. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's the nice thing. The general, the public out there, the general public that's driving, they are heeding to the so lights and sirens and pulling over for CHP at this point, which is great to see because a lot of times, it, people get confused, and that just causes more problems for the uh, police agency. It is great to see, and, and I'm sure uh, you've seen this before. The last thing you want to see are people trying to get involved and trying to, on their own, uh, block this person in and bring it to a stop, right? Yeah, there was a pursuit months ago with a Mustang where a local tour guide, he decided to oh, box in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. something we definitely do not recommend. You know, get out of the way, let the professionals do what they have to do. Yeah. All right, and now it is a, he's right by the, uh, that shopping mall right there off of Woodman. I believe it's the Westfield Shopping uh, Center. And uh, going through this residential area, a note to the people who are in this area and in this general vicinity. Uh, he, Hazel, I'm not sure. Hazeltine? Yeah, Hazeltine. So. Uh, if you're in this area, I see a lot of residential uh, uh, buildings here. Stay in your home. This guy, whoever it is, or woman, could pull over at any time, bail out of that vehicle, and head into your home as he nearly 
clipped somebody just now. Nearly did a head-on collision there as he was close to driving on the, on the center line or on the wrong side of the road. Now uh, looks like he's heading westbound again on what else? Moore Park Moore Street. Park. Back to Moore Park Street. Uh, this is at least the third time we've seen him go down Moore Park Street uh, since this pursuit began. It's been going in a very circular fashion in this area of Studio City, North Hollywood um, area. As we, as we mentioned earlier, it began in the Inland Empire, and uh, we're not sure exactly what time it began, but um, it came into our area here in uh, the Glendale area where the studio is located just a little bit after 5 o'clock. All right, and Scott Reif, we have two helicopters live over this pursuit right now. Scott Reif is in one of them. Scott, you can navigate for us where we are right now. I believe it's westbound still on Woodman or on uh, uh, Moore Park. Uh, that Park. And yeah, and I'm actually at this street here. It looks like Van Nuys Boulevard. So back going northbound on Van Nuys Boulevard, uh, no. just um, headed northbound slowly and there it looks like possibly just running a light um, and uh, moving back towards the 101 freeway. Uh, it's tough for us to keep in sight here. We're just actually getting acclimated and getting back over the scene or getting over the scene for the first time. So um, at this point in time, he's back northbound on Van Nuys Boulevard. All right, and the traffic in that particular part of town at this time of day, normally pretty heavy. Uh, so he's going to have to really do some, oh. some driving, and he's doing it, and it's uh, dangerous. He's weaving around and really trying to get around all this traffic. He, uh, he was on Van, uh, right there. He could have gotten on the freeway there at Van Nuys Boulevard. He did not. Uh, as we zoom out that picture, uh, Looks there, like he is. Onto Looks the freeway there he here. is. He is getting on the freeway, but he's going westbound. Uh, that is correct. Freeway, yeah. yeah, westbound. He's heading uh, on the 101. He could, from here, get on the San Diego Freeway, uh, as uh, Bruce mentioned, or he could continue on the 101. I think there's going to be traffic and heavy traffic whichever way he goes at this point. I think either freeway or either, you know, yeah. or stays on the one he's on, he's going to be moving pretty slowly. Well, the last time he jumped on the freeway, he wasn't on very long. He was only on until maybe the first exit he got off, I think. he? There's a, there's a close-up yeah, shot like he, yeah. of the uh, individual, and this does appear to be a Ford dog. Explorer. and uh, which Maybe is on the, the phone. Right, could See? be. Could be uh, on the phone, but it's the same sort of vehicle, coincidentally, that the CHP is driving uh, that is pursuing it. Five, CHP driving West. those uh, right fairly souped-up Ford Explorers. They switched to those a couple of years ago when uh, Ford stopped making those Crown Victorias that were so famous that we've uh, been watching for years in these pursuits. Now it's the uh, Ford Explorer an SUV that is in pursuit of another Ford Explorer you know, as we go you through You know, Mark and Michelle, I'm sorry. One of the other things we've seen recently is with the advent of cell phones. Well, is he going to oh, be on the, the phone talking to the, to the police saying, you know, I want to turn myself in, but I'm afraid. Um, and wh what do I need to do to facilitate this? Or he could be talking to loved ones, getting advice. You know, I've kind of crossed the line now. What do I need to do to end this safely? For those of you who are just joining us, this is Eyewitness News Now at 5.30. Michelle Tuzzi along with Mark mm -hmm. Brown as we continue to follow a police pursuit now transitioning to the 405 North. But it looks like now getting off onto Burbank Boulevard and there'll be a lot of congestion at this intersection. This comes to a standstill here and this is when it really gets to be concerning for officers whether or not he's going to continue, get desperate, slam into other cars to try and get away. Uh, so this is where it really can get interesting and get uh, dangerous dangerous for everyone involved. At this point in time, though, it looks like the light just turned green and making a right turn, which is headed eastbound now on Burbank Boulevard away from the 405. Yeah, went right past, well, it just scared me. South on minivan, Sepulveda. You could see kids in the van, mm -hmm. it was just scary. Mm -hmm. Okay, making a turn now, what street are we on here, Scott? Sepulveda Boulevard okay. southbound, so headed back down towards the Ventura Freeway. Sepulveda looks like a good drive here. I don't see a lot of signal light congestion. Uh, if he continues on uh, Sepulveda Boulevard, you can get back on the uh, 405 freeway once you pass the 101, so there'll be some options as far as freeways are concerned. Uh, at least for the moment, it seems to be driving at a rate of speed that is about the speed limit. And uh, we only have one patrol car, it looks like. Well, there are several, but one in the immediate vicinity right behind the vehicle. And LAPD has taken over there overhead, but there you see into on coming traffic. Mm -hmm. Certainly this individual is desperate and now making a left turn. We'll see if we can get that street for you. Uh, it, not certain exactly what street he's on at this point in time, uh, but we'll try and get that for you. So traveling back to the east now, just making that turn away from Sepulveda Magnolia. Boulevard. Yeah, Magnolia. Magnolia. Okay. Eastbound on Magnolia. Again, the speeds are picking up here 
and you see all these apartment buildings that line this street. People uh, may be out, people may be backing out or getting out of their driveways or the, the cross traffic. This is a very dangerous situation and a reminder if you're in this area, this part of Van Nuys right now, you are advised to uh, stay indoors. Don't come out and try to look at this. Just stay in your home and, and keep the doors and windows locked because as we have seen countless times with pursuits, <clears throat> excuse me, they frequently end with the suspect getting out of the car and running, making a run for it. They could end up in your backyard. They could end up inside your home. We've seen it uh, dozens of times, Michelle and I, over the years covering these things. Uh, that, that It just adds a whole new dimension of danger to these sorts of uh, endeavors by, uh, you, you by know, fleeing Mark, suspects. Bruce, go ahead. That, uh, is about this. It was just a suspicious person in a vehicle call, which is kind of a low-level call. But this person obviously has an exigency to get away. They travel a pretty great distance that? Wow. from Chino. Wow. So there's something, something going on here. Car. Yeah, you somebody understand? just threw something at it. Yeah, because uh, I can't. I wonder if we can uh, re rack that video and show that. Uh, just keep it in front of you more. Back off. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Okay. That was. Uh, that, that's really something nice. we definitely don't recommend. Yeah. Um, and Bruce, I think, is on about a seven-second delay, so he just saw that. We saw that initially as it was happening. But as yeah. somebody stepped out into the street, threw something at the vehicle right at the driver's side window, it bounced off. The I don't know if it uh, caused any, the intersection uh, drop, uh, tell any me. real impact to the vehicle. Obviously, it didn't stop the pursuit. The guy's uh, continuing on. Uh, again, eastbound on uh, what street? Is it Magnolia, did we say? Magnolia, yeah. Magnolia. Yep. Eastbound on Magnolia, heading back towards what would be the Sherman Oaks area now. He was in Van Nuys. And now it looks like he's going to go Hazeltine north again. on, what is it? Hazeltine. Hazeltine. Northbound on Hazeltine. Southbound, Hazeltine. And uh, uh, Scott Wright? Southbound, right. Or southbound, Hazeltine? Yeah, we are southbound Hazeltine, headed right back down towards the uh, the Bloomingdale's, the uh, the Fashion Center there, and the 101 freeway. So it's the exact same spot the vehicle was at just moments ago. Uh, we picked this up, uh, you know, sometime after you did. So I don't know if he's been in this area earlier, but this will be a loop that the individual has made now, and uh, we've seen that several times in the past, where they'll continue to go into areas that they're familiar with, um, and that that very well could be the case. And now we're making a left turn. And I believe this may be Riverside Drive once again, headed now just in front of the mall, which is a dangerous situation because it has so many people out. Now on Riverside, headed eastbound. What was the street where the person Look, came out? Do you know, uh, Scott, what that street was where that individual came out and threw something at the car, the vehicle? You know, I was not able to identify the exact street <laughs> yeah, when that okay. happened. Yeah, Michelle, I think it was Magnolia. Magnolia? It was on Magnolia, yes. Okay. I didn't know the cross street, but it was on Magnolia. Um, and certainly, you know, we've seen so many of these things end badly, and every time I follow one of these, you just hope that no one we gets hurt. I mean, that's always the case that you're worried about. There might have been a problem with the mirror. I'm not certain he was trying to adjust his mirror. And now you can see the individual is just desperate into oncoming traffic, and I think we're coming up on possibly Woodman here. That may be the intersection of Woodman, and uh, we'll see the turn here making look at a that. There's a traffic accident turn. already. Look at that. Oh There's my a, God. either yeah, traffic that. accident or some other people just sitting there waiting and maybe saw this coming, but two cars uncomfortably close together. This is right by Notre Dame High School and Ooh, he crash. is now uh, heading what I is uh, northbound, right? Uh, Correct. Looks like it based yeah. on the shadow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Northbound yeah. on Woodman. Northbound on, uh, Woodman. Northbound on Woodman, now back westbound. What's that street? From, uh, it wasn't Riverside. Okay, well we're trying to get the no, location, but in the meantime. Uh, people need to be on the lookout in this neighborhood hey. again. Okay. Uh, yeah, here we go. Very yeah, it's narrow. the first time we've seen him in a residential area, area like this. Between Woodman and Houston. Looks like he's going to be heading back toward Riverside Drive now. Scott, what are you seeing that's ahead of him? Do you see officers deployed or, or, or LAPD units involved in this as yet, or is it still CHP? Well, LAPD has taken over. We do have some CHP, but it's really difficult for them to uh, try and anticipate where the vehicle is going when he makes turns like that. That's the first time I've seen him go into a, a residential area and not just drive on a major street. I think we're back on Riverside now, traveling westbound. So we're headed back towards the 405. It's in a circle here. It's going to be right back in front of the Fashion Center once again. But that was the first turn I'd seen where it actually went into a residential area and then came back out. But it's very difficult for them to anticipate 
uh, those types of moves. If he stays, you know, on Magnolia, stays on Riverside and continues that pattern, they'll be able to set up. But through that little uh, residential area, that'd be difficult. I think we're southbound now on Hazeltine, if I'm not mistaken. So this is a pattern we've seen several times, southbound on Hazeltine. If it continues, we make a right turn on Riverside like last time. Well, now he's turning into the shopping center. So this really gets oh, dicey in mm. a situation like this underneath the parking structure. And that's more than likely where this individual will foot bail and then try and merge uh, or try and, you know, get in with uh, people and uh, be able to get away. Yeah. Uh, because the helicopter will not be able to help or support the ground units at this point in time. Is this the Fashion yeah. Square Mall? It is. Yes, yes it is. It's the, it's uh, one of the areas that, like Scott was talking about, well, the pattern is not its not going to happen now, but the other problem you run into now is you have hundreds of people there, shoppers, children, parents, and you've got to set up a containment, and you may have a dangerous situation that actually goes into the mall, which is something that nobody wants. Boy, that is really scary. Okay, we just got some new information about the suspect wanted as part of a forgery investigation and uh, also as we continue to follow this we have that video re now that shows a, a dramatic development at 5 34 p.m. when a person went out into the street and go. looked what appeared it looked like an egg that he threw at the vehicle uh, this was on Magnolia uh, and you, there it is again yeah and on the left side of our screen is the live picture which uh, indicates that he is still on the move Back onto Magnolia. he's still on the move leaving the mall parking lot He's getting mm -hmm. onto Magnolia now. Back onto Riverside. And back onto Riverside. So he is not stopping yet. The, uh, if there's any good news here, it's that he's a forgery suspect. He's not wanted for a violent crime. We don't know if there's any potential violence in his, in his nature, but certainly erratic driving is. And as we uh, see him here, this is a parking lot. There's a, I believe there's a Toys R Us there. There's, there's going to be a lot of pedestrian traffic through here. There's a bank. Oh, oh boy. He's getting pinned and in here. He's it does look like it's a single male occupant, though, at this point. Look at him. Wow. Flooring it. Yeah. Well, thank goodness he left that mall parking lot. That was a very scary situation. What, would, what could have happened there with him? All right, Riverside at Woodman. Now he's going dead on against a, a CHP vehicle there. Oh. There's, a, there's a pedestrian out there that's waving at him. More pedestrians crossing right the street. On, this on is Woodman. getting much more erratic. He is southbound on Woodman now. Uh, again, watching this person kind of circling this area. We're not sure what he's trying to do. That's what it's so hard to figure out here. There's no neighborhood yeah, right here for him to foot bail in. Uh, yeah, Mark, he, one of the nice things is ahead, you'll Mark. have LAPD will be flooding this area with units. So in case he does foot bail, um, they can set up a perimeter very quickly and take this person into custody without incident, hopefully. Bruce, what is your message to these people you're seeing who are coming out? We just saw a guy a second ago, you know, looked like he was ready to approach the vehicle, and then we saw the guy who threw the egg at the vehicle. What, what would you tell these people? You know, with the advent of live television and social media, people feel they need to get involved, and the message is that would don't. Riverside. Stay inside, let the More police, apart. let the professionals do their job without the interference. And you don't know if this person has a gun. I mean, it just seems uh, pr uh, pretty crazy to get close to someone like this. Yeah, I mean, Michelle, you're, you're totally right. I mean, you know, don't get involved. Um, let the professionals do their job. And, and you may become part of the problem, too. And that's the last thing we want. All right, he's now on Ventura Boulevard. He's westbound. That's the picture on the left-hand side of your screen, the, the smaller box there. Uh, and... Again, the traffic at this time of day on uh, this afternoon is going to be uh, fairly heavy on surface streets as well. And he's now on Ventura Boulevard. Of course, as I say that, it's clear. But uh, he's now on Ventura Boulevard westbound in the Sherman Oaks area. Uh, what we believe is a forgery suspect that is now being pursued by CHP and LAPD running into traffic. And this is, the, this is where it gets really dicey is whenever he runs up against some traffic, whenever he runs up against stopped vehicles, he himself almost never stops. Watch that street. He tries to keep going. There's a and, woman filming him. Oh, man. Uh, and that he's now turned what would be... Uh, South or, or north northbound oh. off of uh, Ventura. Oh, there the vehicle stopped. stopped. Give me oh, the street. Are drawn. You know the street? It's Calhoun. 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 Oh boy. All right, and so don't know why he has stopped oh, he's right there. Out. He, he's getting out. He stopped, kind of almost out of nowhere, and he is giving up. 
Yeah. A very hopeful sign yeah. here. All right, All right. Bruce, so what walk they're doing us through now, this. They're, they're, they're doing a felony traffic stop where they'll have the driver uh, get on the pavement, prone him out, uh, handcuff him, or call him back to the vehicle. Uh, there they go. They're calling him back, and they'll take him into custody, and then CHP will clear the vehicle. All right. Well, this is very good news, and uh, hopefully there's no one else inside that vehicle. And, you know, getting back, you know, to that guy we saw a short time ago throwing the object at the car, it's, I think it's just, oh, who am I to, to say, but in speculation that people are just, they get really frustrated when they watch these pursuits. You know? Yeah. Well, you know it, it, I mean, angers saying, yeah. of, it angers a lot of people. A lot of people. And yeah. they may cause accidents, which... They don't care, but yeah. meanwhile, now possibly someone's hurt. Yeah, exactly. All right, so they are still in the process now of uh, clearing the vehicle. Uh, it's dangerous with the with the tinted glass, isn't it? Yes, that that's something that uh, people do, and you know, you're walking up on a vehicle with tinted windows, especially at night. You know, your adrenaline starts to flow. What is it? Can you tell? I bet it does. All right. Well, they're checking it, and their body language certainly indicates that uh, they're clear. Uh, oh, it's yep, Oregon license four. plates, yep. too. Yeah. Code 4. Um, and, uh, yeah, they might even see them holding up uh, the four fingers. It's not quite Code 4 yet, and they've opened the rear hatch, checking it. Out of state, yeah. And that is uh, that. Uh, Oregon license plates on this vehicle. We'll try to find out more about what spawned this whole thing to begin with um, but it was first came across as a report of a suspicious cool. person Bruce we want to thank you for your input on this helping us get through yeah. this uh, and my uh, pleasure Mark and Michelle as always thanks, all right Bruce. thanks for, for, for tuning thank in you. and for helping us out uh, so that is it the pursuit has ended okay good to see that now on to more breaking news panic in the streets of Munich Germany so, but it, the with the slower speeds on surface streets, do do officers now have uh, more potential to use a spike strip, for example? You know, the spike strip is a great tool. The problem with it is you have to set it up ahead of time, and that's usually used when the suspect or suspect has a repeat pattern of driving on the same streets. Um, like right now, I believe he's possibly on Tahunga, mm -hmm. heading yes. back over to Riverside. It looks like. Yeah, he yes, just passed right. Riverside. Now he's, uh, yeah, he's on, I think he's on Riverside now. And uh, this would be uh, the Toluca Lake area and North North Hollywood slash Toluca Lake. And he's, uh, his speeds are picking up as that street is fairly empty. And uh, it's do this does uh, create a real element of danger here, right? Because you could have uh, people crossing the street, cross traffic, uh, people who are completely unaware that this is going on. Uh, one would assume the LAPD would have been notified now that they're in L.A.'s territory? Yes, sir. What the CHP will do is notify the local agency of jurisdiction to say, we are in your area, and uh, you may have LAPD North Hollywood unit paralleling the pursuit or being in the area in case of a pursuit terminus. Wow, he's really picked up speed now on uh, Moore Park heading eastbound, heading toward the Toluca Lake area, and... Um, do you expect that the officers will continue to stay close on this person, even though he is exhibiting uh, pretty erratic, uh, you know, maneuvers there and going at high rates of speed? You know, at this point, yes. He, uh, the suspect is driving radically um, to the point where there is an urgency and an urgency. But at this point, they're going to stay with it until it becomes dangerous to cancel it and go into the tracking mode with the helicopter. I'm sure the LAPD airship is overhead. Okay, he's on uh, Ensign Street, I believe, and uh, coming off of uh, Moore Park. He's now on Riverside, on heading westbound there. on Riverside. You saw a near collision yeah. there. Um, and we get the kind of the impression he's kind of circling this area. He it looked like he was going to try to get on the freeway at one point as he was approaching Vineland from Moore Park. There is an on-ramp there, but he, he sort of made a move toward it and then either thought better of it or just couldn't make the, the turn. So now it looks like he is back on Moore Park uh, and looking, I'm wondering if he's just looking for another place to get back on oh, the freeway. on a bike. Jeez. Yeah, this is, uh, this is kind, of, kind of scary. The speeds... Uh, getting up there. I mean, the, the, the typical typical street uh, speed there would be about 35 miles an hour. 
Uh, he's yeah, now he's passing. probably doing about 55, 60. And mm-hmm. like you said, it looks like he does appear to be looking to get back on the freeway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, he's circling, isn't he? He just made a, it, made a big well, circle. He was just on that same street a moment ago. So, yeah, now he's going back to where yep. he came from, yes. Yep. And we see this a lot with pursuits, don't we? It, it, it could be he's finding, trying to find the freeway here, or it could be uh, trying to find a place to foot bail. Yeah, and the other thing about this area, too, is um, there's not a freeway on-ramp that's real accessible on that street. I know that street very well, mm-hmm. and it's kind of confusing. All right, and he's on Moore Park now, and he's heading eastbound. Uh, and uh, this would be uh, either, depending on I, you know what area here, it's North Hollywood or Toluca Lake. I don't know what the cross street is here. He's heading towards Moore. Oh, this is Moore Park. All right, this is Moore Park now that he's on. He's westbound on Moore Park. Again, kind of some of the same territory yeah. he has been covering. Uh, there is a freeway off-ramp. There are a few, uh, actually from Riverside more than from Moore Park. And uh, perhaps he is trying to find them, or we don't know whether he might be trying to find familiar territory. This could be where he uh, lives or is uh, familiar with. Um, This pursuit, just to catch you up on what's happening here, began in Chino. The uh, California Highway Patrol uh, has been in pursuit of this individual for quite some time, uh, going all the way from Chino uh, and then ending up on the 134 freeway westbound and then bailing in uh, the North Hollywood area. Uh, on Magnolia off the 170. Now he's basically been kind of circling through this area of Moore Park, Riverside, Magnolia, Tahunga, uh, and uh, trying, it appears, to either get back on the freeway or look for someplace familiar to uh, hang around. But in the meantime, uh, these surface streets, uh, Michelle, Mm -hmm. just not the place that you want to see this pursuit happening. No, we we saw bicyclists that this person passed uh, just a moment ago. We've seen pedestrians. uh, Studio City area now, we're told, and uh, on Laurel Canyon uh, as this continues now. With CHP in pursuit. I'm sorry, he's going to have to make the right on Laurel Canyon heading back to the Ventura Freeway here. He's now northbound on Laurel. And Bruce, even though he's continuing to go to, oh, wrong side boy, of the road, going down the wrong side here of that median, uh, he continues to go down these surface streets. Uh, how long would it take for him to drive around on surface streets before this would be handed yeah. off to LAPD? Now he's getting back on the freeway. Oh, never from mind. You know, that, it's a moot point. He's getting back at on this the freeway. Point, um, eastbound. You know, they're uh, going to stay right? with or it westbound until westbound. it stays on the surface streets for a while. There, he's getting back on the freeway now, so CHP is going to reengage. But the Ventura Freeway, as you could sell, uh, westbound, is during rush hour, and he's headed toward the San Diego Freeway. Right, and he's going to probably hit some significant traffic as he gets closer to that 405 Freeway. Yes, ma'am. It always gets really heavy there. All right, it looks like he's trying to get off here. This might be Woodman, I'm not sure. It's either uh, Coldwater Canyon, could be Woodman, but you see him. He is trying to get around these the, the, the cars in front of him. Mm-hmm. And uh, is somebody, as when they're involved in a pursuit, are some of the officers, okay, he's at a dead stop right now, and this is where it gets dicey. Uh, is somebody, like, calling out the different violations that are, that are occurring along the way? For example, when he was driving on the wrong side of the road, is some sort of record being kept, I guess, for charging later in terms of the things that he is doing as he gets yeah. off the freeway now, going through that gas station parking lot? Uh, and now on River, I believe that's Riverside he's on now, again, going back eastbound on Riverside through Studio Texas. City. Pulling into, uh, he's going to be on Riverside Drive uh, eastbound now at Coldwater. Yeah, you know, to your point, yes, you, the, the lead vehicle is concentrating on following the suspect vehicle. The second or even the third vehicle is what we call calling the pursuit, saying speed, direction, travel. So, so then the second or the third vehicle is determining what the strategy is. Is that what you're saying? Well, the strategy is unfortunately one of it's dictated by the suspect or suspects driving the vehicle. The other thing too, the watch commander or supervisor in the field is making a judgment call That's on it. a minute-to-minute basis of this pursuit, and they're the ones that determine. Okay, you know what? Speeds are way too high. I'm going to have my vehicles back off or you know what, we're going to let this pursuit go because the crime involved is so heinous and egregious that we have to catch this suspect. Um, and you just don't know how many people could be inside that vehicle, right? And that, and that must be um, of concern to the officers as well, of course, when they, 
when this person eventually does pull over, uh, they just don't know what, what they have on their hands. Oh, yes, ma'am. And, you know, you always assume there's people in the vehicle until you know otherwise, but you'll see it the, when, the, when the pursuit is terminated, that's why they will clear the vehicle because people can hide. And with the newer SUVs and some of the cars now, they tint the passenger and other wind 